Well, a blessed Monday morning, dear saints. Thanks for joining us today, the 5th of February, as we begin this new month. And as we start today, our psalm is from Psalm 31, and we jump in to the Gospel of John. First chapter, 19th verse, John the Baptist pointing us to baptism, most importantly, pointing us to Christ. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Well, hear the word from the psalm today. In you, O Lord, do I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me. Incline your ear to me. Rescue me speedily. Be a rock of refuge for me, a strong fortress to save me. Love the Lord, all his saints. The Lord preserves the faithful, but abundantly repays the one who acts in pride. Be strong, and let your heart take courage. All you who wait for the Lord. It struck me this morning as I read that psalm that that this really echoes what we hear in Psalm 27, that same thing. Be strong, let your heart take courage, that rock of refuge that we have in Jesus. And that, my friends, out of all the things in our world, is the only thing that does not change. God's love, God's mercy, God's forgiveness for you, Who he has created you to be in holy baptism does not change. And that's what John is going to direct us to in just a moment in the gospel reading for today. The beginning of John chapter 1, 19 through 34. And this is the testimony of John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you a prophet? And he answered, No. So they said to him, Who are you? We need to give an answer to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Then why are you baptizing if you are neither the Christ, nor Elijah, nor a prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. But among you stands one you do not know, even who comes after me, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. These things took place at Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. The next day he saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks before me, because he is before me. I myself did not know him, but for this purpose I came baptizing with water, that he might be revealed in Israel. And John bore witness. I saw the Spirit descend from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and have borne witness that this is the Son of God. This is the word of the Lord. Well, as we jump into St. John, he's one of my favorite gospel writers because John was kind of a no-nonsense guy. All the rest of the gospel writers wrote, in a sense, to help you see that, that Jesus is, that God is man in Jesus. John takes the other approach. John helps us to see that Jesus, the man, is God, and he continually points to him. Right at the beginning, when the crowds send uh, Jews, or the Jews sent uh, the the Pharisees and the the priests and the Levites, sorry, 
They sent the priests and the Levites to John to say, who are you? They're trying to figure out why he's doing what he's doing. But that question is significant. They were looking for some sort of authority to begin to do the things that he's doing. Baptizing, things like that. And when they asked him, John's response was continually, no, he didn't even wait for them to ask the question. I am not the Christ. Get that out of the picture right away, and that's a great place for all of us to recognize and to be. I am not the Christ. He's not Elijah. He's not one of the prophets. It would make sense for the the priests and the Levites to ask him if he was Elijah, because remember, Elijah went up into heaven and did not die. So they thought maybe he was Elijah. He's not Elijah. He's not a prophet. Then who are you? What authority do you have to do the things that you're doing? That's really the question behind the question. I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. What a great answer. He's simply a man that is pointing to Jesus. And that's a great place for all of us to be. When we look at that question, who am I, if somebody asked you that, and like many people ask us, you know, who are you? Tell me about yourself. They're trying to figure out who we are. They're trying to figure out what's important for us. They're trying to figure out what they have in common and maybe not with us, what's important and what isn't. And John didn't start out by saying, you know, I'm single, I've been out in the wilderness, I've got lovely camel hair's coat and a a belt around my waist, and I love locusts, by the way. He didn't start out there. First, he reminded us, I'm not the Christ. But then he simply said, I'm one out in the wilderness, crying, make way for the Lord. What a great preacher. But really, what a great thing for all of us. Because by our identity in Christ, we do the same thing. John was uh, there. He's the cousin of Jesus, remember. He baptized Jesus. The Holy Spirit came down. God spoke. What an event. But as John is there, when he answers, his answer points to Christ. That's how I try to answer when people say, who are you? Not piously, not trying to help them see, you know, look, a super pastor. No, uh, honestly, everything for me starts when I was conceived in baptism, when I was born into the Spirit in baptism. Who are you? I'm a baptized child of God. And we could end right there. All the rest is secondary to that. Baptized child of God means that God's promises are mine, made in the waters of baptism. They do not depend on me. They do not depend on what I do. They do not depend on anything, on how great or how sinful I am. It is simply God making a promise in baptism. In water, in the word, just like he said, he makes us his own child. He adopts us into his family with all the rights and privileges of his own dear son, Jesus. He gives us faith to believe what he writes in his word. And then he connects us, most importantly, to what Jesus has already done. We can clearly say, all of us in baptism, I am not the Christ, but I am his brother in faith. I am his adopted brother, I am a part of God's family, and what Jesus says about me is true. I am forgiven, and so are you. Just simply living the baptized life, I am a voice of one crying out in the wilderness that we live in here. I am a baptized child of God so that you know where to start when you try to understand me or any Christian. The question was from the Levites and the priests, why are you baptizing? And that's a good question for us as well. John was called to be baptized, or called to baptize by the Holy Spirit to do this work, pointing to Jesus. But uh, the question comes up, can you baptize? Now, I can baptize because I am a pastor, and that's what pastors do. It's part of the, the job of a pastor to baptize people in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But so can you. 
Dear saints, remember, baptism is a gift to us, and it, it does not have to be administered by a pastor. In the hymnal itself, there is a right for baptism by someone other than a pastor. Same process. I have the child, or the person that has the child, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and that's it. That is a real and a true baptism, because baptism depends on what God says and does, and not on who you are, the initials behind your name, or what you've done or haven't done. <clears throat> Excuse me. Luther even goes on to say that if the devil himself baptized somebody, it would be a valid baptism. If he used, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and he used water. Because baptism does not depend on the person doing it. Every now and then you'll hear a story of a pastor who is disgraced and leaves the office, and then there's all kinds of questions. Was the Lord's Supper valid? Was baptism valid? Was my marriage valid? Because we have a tendency to think that the official act is because of who did it instead of the gift that was given when God instituted it. When God said, baptize, we baptize, and we do it with water and the word, and that baptism gives us what God says. If you do it or if I do it, it's the same gift. What a great thing that is to know that it doesn't depend on the man. Because if it did, we would end up like so many other denominations. Oh, I've backslidden, I haven't been in church, I haven't been reading God's word, I've been doing terrible things, I guess I need to go be baptized again. No, dear saints, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, and if we lead a sinful life and we don't live in our baptism, it isn't we need to be rebaptized. That would be like saying, well, it didn't really take the first time. When we recognize our sin, we repent. And even that is a gift from God because it's through faith that we see that repentance is a part of the Christian life. So baptism brings faith, brings Repentance brings forgiveness, brings identity for you in Christ Jesus our Lord. At the end of the reading for today, John uses, has this phrase, uh, the next day Jesus, uh, he saw Jesus coming to him and he said, Behold the Lamb of God that comes to take away the sins of the world. I love that expression and that saying because it reminds us so clearly of God showing us in the Old Testament what he was going to do. The Passover lamb, a lamb without spot or blemish, put its blood on the door, eat its body, it's all there. Look, the Lamb of God that comes to take away the sins of the world. That's what we, uh, what we celebrate in the Lord's Supper, that this right here of body and blood, this meal is, look, the Lamb of God that comes to take away the sins of the world for you. At the end of the reading for today, John says something that Peter's going to reiterate later, that Thomas is going to say, that the centurion guard is going to say at Jesus' crucifixion. And I have seen and borne witness that this is, pointing to Jesus, the Son of God. It is not by man you make that, that expression or that proclamation. It is by the gift of faith that lives in us in our baptism. Dear Saint, you are a child of God. You are forgiven. You have all the rights and privileges that God gives to his own dear son because you are his. Redeemed in the waters of baptism, forgiven through the cross of Christ, and now we live as baptized children of God, pointing ahead just like John as a voice crying out in the wilderness, make way, the Son of God is coming. Believe and be baptized. In the name of Jesus, amen. Well, if we're talking about John, we should talk about baptism. What is baptism? Baptism is not just plain water, but it is the water included in God's command and combined with his word. Which is that word of God, Christ our Lord says in the last chapter of Matthew, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
we pray. Father in heaven, we thank you again for today and the gifts you have given to us. We thank you that you have called us to be your own in the waters of baptism. We pray, dear Father, you would give us strength that we may be faithful as John was and that we may continue to point people to you. Strengthen us, Father, in our baptism. Hear us as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, dear saints, live in your baptism. Join me again tomorrow. We'll gather for more from St. John. Go in his peace.